Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our, I think this is our fifth um, Dimensions webinar. Um, welcome to, want to welcome our guest, Lindsay Gar. She is the head teacher at West Bolden Primary School up in Kine and Weir. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. You don't have to have your camera on if you don't want to. Obviously, Lindsay will be sharing a screen, so you'll be wanting to watch her presentation. And I just request that everybody put themselves on mute if they can, please, just so we don't get any kind of little interruptions or anything. That'd be great. Um, there'll be opportunity to ask Lindsay some questions, but what I ask, would request is that they're gonna be probably at the end, um, unless anything is really a burning question. And if you pop them in the chat box at the bottom of our um, of the screen, then I will be monitoring those as Lindsay talks through her presentation. Um, the sort of theme of today's webinar is um, a bit of a case study. Um, Lindsay joined us for our inaugural conference back at the beginning of the month down in Birmingham. And she talked with us about their Ofsted experience and what it was like for them. So this is very much um, a view on Lindsay's school of West Bolden, um, but hopefully you will take away some real um, useful and helpful and de-stressing <laughs> points um, from it and that you will hopefully your Ofsted experience may be um, similar to theirs or it may be very different but hopefully you'll be fully prepared for when that call comes if you're due one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Lindsay, she is going to tell you a little bit about herself and then she's going to get started. So Lindsay, welcome over to you. Thank you and welcome everybody. It's great to be here and um, and be able to share a little bit of my Ofsted experience with everyone because I, I know how um, <coughs> how um, stressful it can be and we all want to be as prepared as we can. So I'm going to share my presentation with you and um, I'll be able to talk through it. Um, and the, a little bit of context about my school, but then obviously the meaty parts will be about um, Ofsted experience and also about preparation for subject leaders. So I'm just going to have a look at this. So a little bit about the school context. Um, we are up in Tyne and Weir. In, uh, in South Tyneside, and it's a 1.5 entry school, so one and a half form entry school. Um, before we were Ofsteaded in September, three weeks into our new term, our last Ofsted was in 2009. So that was, um, you know, a long time ago and many Ofsted inspection frameworks since. So um, we knew we weren't um, going to go for outstanding. We, you know, the set said we were a good school and that's what I, I stood by through the through the Ofsted experience. Um, our school has a high level of deprivation so it's about 48% pupil premium so that comes with its own um, challenges um, and we have quite a high level of SEND and in, in, we've got about 30% children with SEND for various needs um, and quite a few of those are on the register um, on the SEND register for social and emotional learning. So again, lots of specific challenges, lots of specific needs. We have 11 children with EHCPs in our school. So every tier we have is allocated to a specific child um, with specific needs. So that's a little bit of context of the school. Um, and I was, I've been head teacher here now coming up for four years um, in October. And obviously I was only there a little while before COVID um, raised this ugly head and then everything kind of changed. So it was a bit of a baptism of fire, but um, it was a case of... Um, what COVID did for me. So... It wasn't all doom and gloom. I took this opportunity as a head teacher to kind of think about 
my school because I hadn't been there very long. So I was thinking about what my school needed, what was the best thing going forward, because obviously I knew what Ofsted was coming, didn't know quite when, but, you know, we, were, we knew we were, every day was a bonus really, because it was 2009 and then the outstanding schools were back in the mix. So we kind of knew what was going to happen at some point as time went on. So COVID gave me a really good chance as a head teacher and, and part of the senior leadership team um, to get together and, and reflect about what our school needed. Um, and, you know, we, our biggest concern, I suppose, was our foundation curriculum because we knew just from speaking to the staff, speaking to um, the children really as well, that our curriculum wasn't doing what it should be doing. It wasn't working for us. It didn't meet the needs of our cohort, our, um, the, you know, the, the, the children that we had in school. And, you know, it, it's a big deal. So we didn't want to jump into it. So we spent a lot of time reflecting on that and doing a bit of research, um, a bit of consultation. And, you know, we, we really... Um, love dimensions and we bought into that so that is you know why I suppose I'm here as well today through dimensions is because they were so helpful for us and helped us with our um our meeting the needs of our children and really making that personalized for our school uh and that kind of sold it to me that it met the needs of our school and, and I have to say Elaine and the team were great and there to support us through the Ofsted bearing in mind that we'd only had this new curriculum um, in place for three weeks before Ofsted came. We'd made the decision prior, so we knew we had the six weeks holidays, but that's a big ask is to get all our staff ready um, for September. And it put a lot of pressure on us and a lot of pressure on the team, but I knew, and you know, I think we all knew in school that if we hadn't have made that change, that we wouldn't have had the good outcome that we, we, we got. So this was really key to our success, our foundation curriculum um, and the readiness of our subject leaders. So that is, is um, you know, was really important for us um, as a whole school. So the COVID, the COVID story was basically where we go, all systems go. I know Deep dives are so important because we needed to get our subject leaders ready. So for us, um, that was key. And a lot of this, we'll talk about our subject leadership um, and how we prepared our subject leaders um, for the Ofsted experience. To be honest, that was, again, very much part of our success because without that, as a head, you're a bit redundant. It was very much focused around our our foundation curriculum. Sorry to um, interrupt you, Lindsay. Just yes. so you know that your presentation hasn't moved very much on my screen. I, I don't know. If different if we're in a... Can you see that now? I can see your slides down the bottom and your main slide in the core on the side. Does it say subject leaders ready or not? No. Oh, right. <laughs> Why isn't it moving? Hang on. Right, try, I'll just, it says I'm sharing. Hmm. And it was working before, wasn't it, Hannah? Because we- It was, checked. it was. Yeah, it was, right, hang on. I wonder if you did a full screen, it might help. Is that, is that moving? That's moving along, yep. Perfect, right, let's try that again. There we go. Yep. Deep dives. Brill. And then you're on to, yeah. Subject leader, perfect, resolved. Sorry about that. So yeah, we, we um, subject leaders were key. This is what, this was our plan of attack over the six weeks holidays because we kind of had a feeling that we didn't know when Ofsted were gonna come. We didn't think it would be three weeks in or as early, but to be fair, it could have been three days in, it could have been three weeks in, it could have been three months in. So we knew we didn't, you know, we were on borrowed time in terms of prepping everybody um, to get themselves, um, on the same page in terms of what subject leaders needed to do. So obviously we looked at the framework, we looked at what we needed, um, Dimensions had a lot of stuff in place already for subject leaders, so that really helped us 
and helped all our subject leaders get the, the information we needed. The first thing we did was, um, you know, have appointed a subject lead within our school, which is uh, Rebecca Swales, who works um, for me, who is a year two teacher. And to be fair, she was instrumental in kind of monitoring those subject leaders, putting all the, the paperwork in place, giving them a toolkit um, in terms of what we expected from everybody, um, all our curriculum leads. You know, I'm very much, um, you know, I think my favorite word is consistency. So we wanted everybody to be on that and have everything the same across every subject lead so that there wasn't an opportunity for anybody to fail so it wasn't about you know yes it was pressure to get ready but we just wanted everybody to succeed and everybody to have um the tools that they needed to do the best job possible um so she put the toolkit in place um you know tight deadlines because we were you know we wanted everything up and running by september we had two inset days in september which we utilized for that purpose um, and, you know, that we wanted them to have all the relevant information, so everything they needed through dimensions, but also all of the Ofsted framework and, and everything, um, all the relevant documents um, for their subjects, so that was all in place. Um, there was a lot of work, there was, and there was a lot for them to do, um, and I don't think, you know, we were the most popular people in terms of, you know, when we would want this by then, can we have this by then? But I think by the end of, of the process, they realized how important it was and how prepared they were and how less stressful it was for them having done all this in the first place. So although, you know, there might have been a few grunts and groans, I think they realized by the end of it all that it, it was definitely worth it. So um, you can see through the, the slides that the documents we wanted them to have their three eyes and um, so every subject this is for every subject lead um had a three eye that had a subject rationale which again was related to our school and related to our dimensions curriculum um but very much in terms of why we chosen um what we chosen and why it was good for our school and good for our children every subject lead um created an action plan to show where we were um, presently where we wanted to go and what we needed to do to achieve that and they still are going to be reviewed because they were very much I suppose still in the process of that because you know Ofsted happened at the beginning of the year so we're still kind of in that process of, of the aftermath of Ofsted and carrying on with what our intentions were as subject leaders. Um, they had their subject snapshot which you can see a little um, example of um, from our music lead, these were really helpful in terms of bullet points um, and when they went into their subject lead, because obviously at the time we didn't know who was going to get chosen, which subjects were going to get chosen, so everybody had the same um, format for these and these were really handy for them to take into um, the Ofsted meetings that they had because it, it again just it does what it says on the tin it's a snapshot of everything that's happening um and also a piece of paper that you can hand off stead as well um so that they've they've got that so they're really handy little documents to have um we wanted everybody to have their topic webs in place skills letters their subject overviews the long-term planning their medium-term planning and these are the things that Ofsted did want to look at so they were very important that they had those and that they understood exactly what they were teaching and also why they were teaching it and where it was leading to um, so very much focus on endpoints for your planning and your curriculum um, we wanted displays obviously you want your school looking good so you know for Bath said coming in we wanted our displays to reflect our curriculum and um, so we um, asked every subject leader to create uh, a display um, you know it didn't have to be completed because we were early days but we wanted to show showcase the children's work as best as possible in a short space of time and then we had um, to collect portfolios of work again three weeks in it wasn't a great deal in them but 
this this is something we're still continuing with you know not everything we do is for Ofsted this is what we want to do as a school to prepare and um you know for our subject leaders to be really good at their leadership um so across the year we're still continuing to collect those work for the portfolios and evidence of good examples of work website is key um you know we we always you get told you know put you know have your website a lot of all all the work on the website all the planning on the website um but you don't realize how much it, how key it was to have everything in place now i've got a fantastic um computing lead who work you know is very good at that stuff because i'm not so it's, it's really handy to have someone in school who is and she worked her socks off putting all of our planning creating a fantastic website which we've got now um and you know it did help because when we spoke to them they they kept saying when we spoke to Ofsted they were saying oh yes we saw that on your website we saw that on your website we saw that on your website and I think the more information you can get on there the less they will delve into that because if they can see it and they can understand it and they can do their research on it already um they will they won't delve into it because they'll know it's there and it's just part of that triangulation process so for us the website was was key that that information was on there for them um so uh and, and then we had um we we wanted to showcase our dimensions curriculum so we made sure we had our character driven artwork and display on classroom displays and we also had um our curriculum launch day as well so we wanted to make it have a have our foundation curriculum a big in, a massive impact so you can see our artwork that we got put up in our school hall to reflect the new curriculum and then we asked everybody to come dressed up as a character and there you can see me at the back as a, a navigator there <laughs> so but it was it was lovely to um to share that with the children and share that with the parents and make a big deal of 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 the new curriculum and, and celebrate that. Just to um, just to chip in a second there, for those people who aren't um, Dimension Schools, we um, are, the way our curriculum is set up is that each phase has a character. So um, our early years are explorers, our years, key stage one, years one and two are pathfinders, lower key stage two are adventurers and then upper key stage two are navigators and you might just be able to see the little characters behind me here on the on the shelf so that's when Lindsay's talking about character driven displays that's what she's talking about are those characters throughout the school go ahead Lindsay thank you um so yeah so the reason we put all that in place was because we didn't want our subject leaders to panic um and like we said preparation for every single one of them to be consistent so that everybody no matter who got chosen as a as a deep dive subject had the information at hand felt um you know knowledgeable enough about their subject as to why and where we were leading with it where we were going what the progression was what the skills were what the knowledge was behind it why we were teaching what we were teaching and the relevance that had to our children and we wanted them to be confident um and we didn't want anybody and i suppose there's that element of you know nobody wants to be that person who lets the team down as well because again we didn't know who was getting chosen um and we wanted them to to, to showcase themselves what we found was really helpful um in one of our and we had yeah we had an inset day to do it and it was quite time consuming and unfortunately i had COVID at that point so i couldn't take part in it um but we set up mini deep dives for every subject leader during our inset day and we came up with a consistent set of questions and my slt um so my deputy head my early years lead um and the curriculum lead rebecca we we uh they took every single subject lead and did a mini deep dive with them um obviously we didn't we, we chose questions that kind of reflected an overview of what they may be asked. Um, and I think although the staff were really nervous, some of them more nervous than others, they really valued that. They really, really valued that. So, um, you know, if you do get the opportunity to do that in your school, I think it's really worth doing. 
um, if you haven't done it already, just to, to support. So ones that were really confident with it, great. Others that weren't and needed a little bit more support, we could put that in place. Um, and it just give us a bit of an idea as well of, of our strengths and our areas for development for when Ofsted did come around. And each session was about 20 minutes long. Um, but you know, those, those subject leaders eventually thanked us for it. Not, you know, not at the time, but they did thank us for it. Um, so that's, that's um, a bit of a tip for, for not panicking the, your subject leaders. So we'll get into the meaty bit of, of the Ofsted now. So Ofsted did ring um, three weeks in, um, and uh, you know, you get that phone call and you pit your stomach drops and I felt a bit sick. And I think the initial phone call was the, the something that I was panicking about the most because you don't know what they're gonna ask you. And I'd wrote reams and reams and reams of stuff. And I had, you know, a, 20 sheets of A4 in front of us for this phone call. And I realized how pointless that was because really, you know, you do know as a head teacher and senior leadership about your school. Um, and you haven't got time, you haven't got time to look through it. You, you know, it's it's an hour and a half phone call and it's very quick and it goes by and, you know, feels like seconds and it's intense. So you haven't got time to be scrolling through everything. You've just got to know about your school and know why you've chosen what you've chosen. And I'm sure as, as, as head teachers and senior leaders, you, you, you know that and you know more than you think. Um, so when they ask you questions, you you do know the answers to them, but um, don't do what, and I tell everybody this, understand your technology and don't do what I did because I cut him off when I went to put him on speakerphone. And that was horrific waiting for him to call back. And um, oh, it, was, it was the worst like five minutes of my life. And I was going, oh my God, I've cut him off. And, um, and he rang back and he, he got put through again from the office. And I said to him, well, that wasn't a good start, was it? And he said, no, not really. And I thought, well, that's great. I've just failed my Ofsted before I've even started. But I think he forgave me because it, it all went all right in the end. But yeah, don't do that. Top tip. Um, so, but, yeah, um, take anything away from today. Don't yeah, have yeah. Ofsted <laughs> Learn how to use speakerphone on your, on, 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 your, on, on your technology. I couldn't believe it. And I just looked at my deputy head and went, oh, oh God. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he was very forgiving and, and you know, as time went on, I think he, he, he didn't take it personally. Um, so we, the phone call happened, um, you know, quite intense, but it was fine. Um, you know, it, it, what I can say is he spent the next, the part of the inspection, the next two days, because it was a two day inspection, was spent kind of triangulating everything that I had said about the school. So everything that I'd, I'd said, so he asked me, um, you know, how far I thought we were behind because of COVID. I said a term because that's what we kind of calculated. And he asked everybody when he came in, you know, the, the teachers and those, how far we thought we were behind. They said a term because that's what we'd said as a school. So it's about ensuring everybody is singing from the same hymn sheet um, because they will check. Um, and that's kind of where we went from then. Um, the deep dives, I'm you know, this is about subject leadership. So, and I thought that was key because our first day of Ofsted was basically spent with curriculum leaders. Um, we had a deep dive in, um, in computing, obviously early reading and maths, and but there was computing and RE. And everybody went, oh God, computing and RE. They're like, oh, the worst subjects. It was fine. It was it was tricky, but it was fine because again, I don't I don't think it would have mattered what subject you chosen three weeks in because three weeks is three weeks coming back from COVID with a new curriculum with children who hadn't really been in school um, and had had remote learning. So I kind of thought, well, you know, it's fair game for any for any subject that they choose because three weeks in there wasn't a great deal in books um, and they did they did take that into account in terms of where we were um, in, as, as the year in it you know so early in the year 
but when he did take the um, curriculum leads in to talk to them, this is the main points. They did go through the medium term plans from year one to year six with a fine tooth comb. Uh, they wanted to check that skills are building year on year. I mean, that was that was key for them. And they questioned every subject leader that they saw about that. There was constant questioning in general about progression across the school, how we check knowledge um, and how SEN children are supported as well. Um, and that's key. Justify everything you do. Pre be prepared for those questions. Questions. They just wanted to know why, why, why we chosen everything. So why are you teaching this? Why now? Where, you know, um, even as a why I chose the curriculum I chose, but also why are we teaching that and why are we teaching it now? Um, what, where, where does that lead to? Where are your endpoints? So you know, if you're teaching about family, if you're teaching about family relationships in reception. Um, that supports in year two when they come to the you know learning about the royal families. It's, it was all about how things connected together, and they wanted to 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 know and under they wanted to know that our staff understood exactly where it was leading to across the school. Um, so that is that's very important. They wanted to know you know early years didn't get away with it. Um, we had four well we had three inspectors in one and one trainee who was shadowing the, the HMI. So we had quite a lot of people around the school. So early years got um, the fair crack of the whip. There was literally an Ofsted inspector in early years, probably most of the day in and out. And my poor early years lead had only started in September as well. So, you know, I felt like that she, I mean, she did herself proud, but that is quite tough. Um, but because she was very experienced at early years, she, she knew her stuff and it was absolutely fine. But they did want to know, even though it was the, the new early years curriculum only three weeks in, how ICT is introduced into reception and how that feeds into year one. So, you know, computing is, isn't really part of that curriculum, but they still wanted to know how that focused in. Questions around how children's knowledge is assessed and how they retain their information and that was checked. So any kind of retention, how we do that, how we do that as a school, how we do that in class. Questions around how subject leaders monitor their own subject, but also questions around CPD for both the subject leads, but also for what they've had as a subject lead, but also what they've delivered to the whole staff. Um, they only looked at books, in the deep dive subjects, so they didn't go wandering off and asking for any other books. So it was only computing um, in years three and five they looked at, and RE books in year one and two. And they looked at six books per year group, um, and Ofsted were happy for us to choose what what children they were. So they didn't pick the children, but they did request that there was some people premium children in, in the children that, um, in the books that we chose. They did cross-reference the work in the books against the medium term plan, and they were very keen to see what the end outcomes were meant to be. So they, they did look at them in depth. So they might have only looked at six, but they did look at them in depth. They didn't make any reference to our marking policy or how the work was marked or presented. They didn't, they didn't ask any questions about that, um, but they were interested in any interventions that were in place and how children were supported. Um, and they were keen to know if the inventions that they had meant they were missing out on their foundation curriculum. So they, they wanted to know that anything that was happening was not gonna impact on a broad and balanced curriculum. Um, so we, ha we had our reasoning behind that. Ours was, was done on a rota, so no children, can, no children missed out on a specific subject every week. Um, and they were quite pleased with, with that kind of approach. So that nobody, no child was missing out on every science lesson or whatever. And because of our themed approach, that kind of doesn't happen anyway. Um, they did lesson visits. Um, they observed computing in early years and RE in early years as well, and had a really in-depth discussion with our early years leader. They observed how the early years environment was set up 
and how it would lead to children learning about RE and ICT and computing. And they questioned the teachers about how they plan to introduce these to the children so they're ready um, for further up the school. And then they had a lot of pupil discussions. I can't stress enough about how pupil focused um, and curriculum focused the inspection was. Um, very, we, we were taken aback, although we'd read about it and we knew that was what it would be like, it still came as a surprise to us about how, exactly how, how pupil focused it was. And three weeks in, we might have had a chance over the six weeks holidays to prep our staff, but we hadn't had a chance to, to, to prep those, the children for it. And that was a shock to their system to be, you know, the detailed question and that was happening um, for them. So they did have people discussions and they asked what children could remember from this week, what they could remember from the beginning of the year and what they could remember from last year, which is really tricky when it had been COVID. It's a bit cruel, but they did ask them because his, his, he was saying, well, it's, you know, they should know maths. They've been taught maths remotely. So we didn't, there wasn't, um, you know, it, it, it did take some leeway, give some leeway for it, but not a great deal. He did expect the children to be able to talk about in detail about what they'd been doing. Um, and the children didn't have any previous work with them or a point of reference. They were just expected to know it and talk about it. Um, now, this so early on did become a bit of a thread for us because our pupils aren't particularly good at public speaking anyway, and they'd had two years kind of not in school. So that caused us, that kind of became a thread for us. And the next day became, um, they wanted to do some shallow puddles. So that led on to, um, to our um, shallow puddles in our other curriculum areas. Um, and they were in history and geography because they wanted to just speak to more children uh, to check that we they were learning and they were remembering what they'd learned. So they looked, they met with a group of girls and um, of boys and girls, and there was more questions about knowledge. They this time they looked at the short term planning. So they reviewed the short term planning for key stage two. And they observed um, a year three computing end of unit assessment as well to check that um, how that worked within a class. So because it had become a thread, we then offered to the inspectors to see how we use Kahoot quizzes um, and things to constantly assess the curriculum. So we said to them, go in and observe, meet with the, meet with this teacher. You know, we weren't we actively said you need to go and look at this because we do do it it does work, our children do know. They wanted really so early in to check that what we were seeing in our monitoring wasn't a lie, that they weren't gonna walk away and that we weren't gonna do anything with our children to help them with retention of knowledge. So they wanted us to show them what, how our systems, how my monitor and how the curriculum was going to work. And we used every opportunity to throw that at them. We gave them the year four weekly planning to show how the knowledge for each subject is interwoven into all the areas and then how that filters into the Kahoot assessment quizzes, um, how we use formative assessment to help our children. And then they met with more key stage two pupils um, to discuss geography and history. Again, massive level of detail. Children could talk about what activities they'd done and what you know, it, it was kind of about, but their level of detail, they wanted, um, you know, more detail, a very deep level of understanding and about how it relates to other things in the current, um, you know, a current environment, current world. So they, it was quite, we were shocked at, at the level that they wanted, you know, it wasn't enough that they could talk about Pompeii and a volcano, they wanted to understand far higher degree of understanding and depth um so you know that's where we move forward now that's the way we we are moving forward as a school is to develop, develop that because that was a strand um and you know in the end it was good we, we came out with a good um rating but it was a little bit of a wobble in the middle because you know those children weren't trained and weren't um 
weren't knowledgeable enough about their subjects because of everything that had went before. Now, if they come in, if they'd come in three months' time, uh, or at the end of the year, I think they'd see a very different picture, um, and that our children are learning to do that in in a much higher level. Uh, but it doesn't come overnight, and it's a and it's a process. But I think, like I say, they trusted in the process. We had all the information in place to help and support um, the children and, and the staff. So an intense experience, but I would say um, a fair process. Um, the, these are my top takeaway tips for today um, to, to help you get the best I suppose be the, as prepared as you possibly can. Now, I, I totally get that every Ofsted inspector is different. Um, every inspection, you know, because ours was computing an RA and there'll be so many different things that they'd look at. But if I can help in any way to kind of prepare you um, for the experience, I would say be organized. Um, be prepared for the phone call, not in terms of reams of paper, but just know your school, know your rationale about why you do everything you do for your children and always reflect back to why it's right for your school. Because they didn't care if it was what we had, what scheme we were using, what, you know, um, what our marking policy was like, as long as we could say this is right for our kids or this is working for our kids because that is what is right for them, you know, um, so be able to justify everything you do and relay that to your staff because they will ask you um, about it. Now, I've said, well, fine, that I, when I eventually learned how to use the speakerphone, that I had all my SLT on speakerphone. So the deputy head was there, um, Lilia's lead was there. And you can hold, you know, I had somebody scribbling down the questions they asked. Um, and when it came to my deputy head's ascent course, so when they were asking about SEN questions, I said, is it okay if, if Steve talks now? And he was fine with that. So don't think it's all on you. You know, you can you can share the load with your SLT because you know you know, don't expect to know everything off the top of your head. And that worked well for us um, as a school. And I think you got a lot of information, and the more you can give him, the better. Who um, mine happened to be a man, so um, the more you can give them, the better. So have your class timetables ready because they will ask for these. There was a half an hour gap while I got the class, class timetables together um, because you'll want to know our, our deep dives were based on, um, were based on what was being taught at the time they came in. So we didn't have much leeway because he wanted to see what was being taught. So have your class timetables ready. You won't have time to read through a script and organize the day. It was really handy because there was four inspectors. They were everywhere. So when you have that, when they send their timetable through, take some time to figure out the logistics of the day and keep them on task. Um, my deputy was really good at going and getting them and taking them where they needed to be. So you don't give them any time to wander around. Do not leave them to their own devices um, and be prepared that they'll They'll be asking you questions wherever they go. So there wasn't a time, you know, even as to when they observed a break time, they were asking why we deployed the staff, where we deployed them and why they were standing where they were. So be prepared for questions like that. You know, every minute they'll be asking you something. Um, number two, triangulation. They'll spend time checking what you've said is true. I've said that. Um, they'll cross-reference it with children. They'll cross-reference it with staff, including your admin your midday supervisors, they'll ask everybody the same questions. Um, make sure all your subject leader stuff is in place and there's no chance for people to deviate. Um, you want everybody to be saying the same thing. And that takes a little bit of time, but you know, it, it's doable. And you know, if, if you've got your systems in place, there shouldn't be a, um, a reason why people aren't saying that, but it just, you know, check about safeguard and knowledge and things like that with everybody. Um, and then top takeaway tip number three would be retention. So embed the knowledge, uh, can children talk about the learning in depth? 
What systems do you have in place to check that? So we've given all our subject leaders time out to go and visit every, you know, the classes and talk to the children, talk to the staff, look at the books, look at the progression, and that's continuing right across the year. Once the cycle of all subjects is done, then we'll start it again. So it's a continual check to ensure everything is done and in place. And that pupil voice is a huge focus for ours. Um, for our class. How do you measure the impact um, and practice not just about subject leadership, but about personal development, behaviour, bullying, SMSC. It was all part of the inspection and what they asked the pupils. Um, so I'm bringing it to an end, you'll be pleased to know. As I said, our oracy became a whole school focus. Lots of developing opportunities for people to talk on a small scale and larger scale. So, you know, Dimensions curriculum is great because it does offer a lot of that anyway. It's woven into the curriculum for us. So as a matter of course, as we continue with our curriculum, the children will get better with that. But obviously we're putting other things in place to, to really enhance that, such as weekly class assemblies, um, which we can open up to parents. Um, we do senior leadership, something called Hot Chocolate and Chat, which is based around pupil voice. Basically, just bribing the children with hot chocolate so that they'll come and talk to us. Um, you know, a little perk for them, and the kids enjoy it. And um, basically, improving our subject ambassadors. We do have a subject, a group of subject ambassadors, children who are keen about a subject, and they are the driving force really behind meeting our oracy target um, and becoming a voice for our curriculum. And, and we're developing that to give our, all our subjects a bit of a buzz. Um, and a focus for our school. So, so that was like a whistle stop tour of our Ofsted experience. So I hope it's been helpful um, in terms of, of preparation for subject leaders. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank oh. you for listening. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lindsay. That was absolutely great. I think um, you've really covered a lot of things. And I think the fact that, you know, that you highlighted that your um the oracy of your children you know the more that they kind of get these questions asked of them the more that the comfortable they're going to be um you know the next time it comes around you know they'll be right on the ball for that so that's really um a really good thing we've got a few questions that are just yeah. now so uh, we've got a question from rosie it says can i please ask what your role what role your subject ambassadors play particularly yeah so we wanted them to we wanted them to be children who are interested in that subject so that they could speak about it passionately. Um, and they they when our subject leaders do um, their pupil voice act, their subject leadership checks, then they'll speak to our subject leaders, but also our curriculum lead meets with them um, and talks to them about the subjects and it's again that kind of modeling role. So she'll model, um, you know, the language that we want them to be able to use about our subject. So we're still in the early stages of it. It's something we want to develop much, much further. But really, we want them to be um, on our website, talking about the subject, showcasing it so that you can click on. Um, we have a particular subject area. So you'll be able to click on that and hear children really speaking knowledgeably about their subject and kind of promoting it across the school. So when we do come to um, do things maybe in art or science, um, the children will be able to stand up as subject ambassadors and talk very, um, very clued in a clued up way about how their subject is delivered um, across the school what makes their subjects special um but it, it's a training exercise um of getting that vocabulary basically to talk about as a historian to talk about the curriculum as a scientist and that really in-depth level i mean great if all the children can do that but it's nice to have that bank of children who are really passionate who we can use um you know as a as a showcase for for the for the every subject great thank you and um, 
Katie Hark has just asked if, the, if um, she could have a, an example of your snapshot document. It was a bit tricky for her to see on her oh, screen. Of course, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really useful for everybody. So if, if you email your snapshot over to me, Lindsay, if you didn't mind. And if, can, if anybody wants one, then um, I'll, I'll try and distribute it out as um, succinctly as possible. <laughs> I mean, I'm, what is a really, and my deputy did this, so when we got the timetable through from Ofsted, um, when we were going through straight after the inspection, while it was still fresh in our heads, we annotated the, the, the timetable as to what had happened and everything that we'd they'd asked of us. So, you know, I'm more than happy um, to share that with people. So I'll email that across as well, because it's really useful to kind of see not seeing everybody's timetable will be the same because it's a specific focus for our school but you kind of just get a look at what um you know who they wanted to speak to what they what kind of questions they asked the children um and what they you know what they asked of the teachers as well because even in the teacher meetings um they asked to see the teachers who they'd been in and observed so that some some teachers didn't get touched at all some teachers didn't even know Ofsted were in, and, you know, they, they never got to say hello to them practically. And then other teachers, bless, who did get chosen for deep dives, got it because they were with them a lot. So they looked at the books, they went in and observed them, and then they asked to meet them afterwards. Now we thought, oh, maybe it's just a little bit of feedback. And actually those teachers were in there for an hour talking again about the lesson, talking about the end points, talking about why they taught that. So. For those teachers who do get chosen as deep dives, it is quite intense. So it's good, I think, to kind of see what questions were asked. So I'm more than happy to share that as well. That will Yeah, I absolutely will. What I'll do for those people, I can see I'm going, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please in the chat. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll get that out to um, to everybody so everyone can see those documents and hopefully it'll be helpful. And just on the subject of, on the subject of subjects, <laughs> That is part of the kind of um, a, a, dim a dimensions um, rationale, isn't it? That you've yeah. um, implemented in the school. So that that's come from the from the curriculum. It has, and and like I say, a lot of our documents, um, you know, we haven't we haven't changed. We've used what you've given us because it works, and you know, it, having those on the website meant that um, we did we had everything in place, and staff were using the same. Um, and we're able to talk about it in very, very confident ways, um, which I think really supported them. Um, yeah, and I, like I said, I can't stress enough. And, you know, if, if you're a head teacher here, I mean, a lot of, we had um, safeguarding leads, so there was a lot of safeguarding elements that I had to talk about. Um, but other than that, as a head teacher, I felt quite redundant there was a lot of time after my initial phone call really there was very little time uh, where he wanted to speak to me he wanted to speak to the children he wanted to speak to the class teachers he wanted to speak to the curriculum leads um and then he kind of just came back to to, to triangulate everything with me there was those little times when they'd come back and, and um and just talk to me about what he had seen um so as a head teacher, you feel a bit like, oh, I should be doing something here. Um, but my, you, the way I saw it is I was just, I was the overview. I was the one who was saying yes, because, or if he, and we don't be afraid to give him evidence. Um, you know, if we thought he didn't have enough, we'd just bring him some in or say, right, go and see that, come and see this. And they were quite happy for you to do that. They weren't just saying, oh no, you've had your chance. You can't talk, you know, if, if on the second day we wanted to show him something about maths, we were more than happy to have a look at it. So don't feel like your chance is gone, you know, throw it at. And I think that's really important. We were quite forthcoming and saying, no, no, have a look at these, talk to these children. We, you know, and, and pushing that. And yeah. um, we weren't, we weren't going to just, you know, sit back and go, no, um, and, and that. And they, they were respond, responsive to that as, as a whole team. And like I say, although it was intense um, and you know exhausting two days, I felt overall it was a fair process. So, you know, nobody wants it to happen to them every week. And thank God they're not coming back for a good few years. But as a process goes, 
fair. Um, but you know, I I can't say that for every officer inspector. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He was the team were very helpful in terms of. And if you do read my Ofsted report, I think probably the only thing that gets picked up is my monitoring in terms of it not being robust enough in terms of our um, our real priorities. But then, you know, my argument was, well, now I know what my real priorities are because you've been. So I will I'll, I will change that. But until you came, you know, I didn't realise oracy was going to be such a big priority because I didn't realize the depth that you are going to need. So obviously now we do, we'll work towards that. So, yeah. but he was quite helpful in sitting with me and going through my actual monitoring plan and showing me where I could improve, which I thought was, you know, quite, quite fair of him to do that and take the time to do that. So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. I'm just, you're getting close to 11 o'clock. I know people have got busy schedules to get on with. Same for you, Lindsay. I guess your day is probably packed. Um, Back to safeguard and train in the South. Oh, yeah. It's never ending. <laughs> um, so, uh, obviously, um, don't feel you've got to send me your email addresses or anything. I've got them all because you all signed up. So you will get um, access to the, this recording um, that you'll get to see. It will later on go on to our YouTube channel, Dimensions Curriculum. So what I do is I cut it down into little snippets for our social media, um, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And then it also goes on to our YouTube. So you will get a link, but you can also come back to it later. Those documents I'll get off Lindsay and I'll get them out to you as soon as possible um, and if you've got any questions or if you've got anything that you'd like to share as a school and you've got some ideas for webinars then please get in touch with me uh, my email address is hannah at dimensionscurriculum.co.uk okay and we're here if you want any more info on us um, Lindsay, thank you so much for today it has been a fabulous webinar so interesting um, so you're very welcome i hope it's helped a little bit um just to ease ease the stress of, of it if I can. Yeah, definitely. I hope it has. Lots of thank yous coming in on the chat. So that's great. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And um, we hope to see you all again soon and um, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Bye everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye.